The Fellowship of Guelpha Saga continues with missing the target on affordable housing. The property developer orcs remain committed to their goal of building Tower Saurons in the Shire to profit from their unaffordable rent and condo fees. In our local War 2, HB Developments proposed a three-story 10-unit building at 14 Stevenson North with zero intent of charging affordable rent. This was no surprise given a recent CMHC report showed that most new buildings in Guelph sold for unaffordable prices last year. Meanwhile, at the top of the university's ivory tower, the fat cats pushed the limits of guaranteeing residence spots for their students. Can the Elder Elves fight back against the property developer orcs and return us back to the days of affordable housing? For the sixth straight year, the Corporation of the Shire missed its target of one in four new housing units having a purchase price below an affordable housing benchmark price, according to an annual report from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. The affordable price benchmark used by the Corporation of the Shire is based on the standard 30% of income rule of thumb in the real estate industry. Some real estate agents learn about this in school. Unlike the hundreds who cheated on their licensing exams at Conestoga last year. Using this income based approach for 2023, the benchmark price is $429,000 for purchased homes and $1,400 per month for rent. According to the CMHC report, of the 428 new residential units that were added to the Shire in 2022, Zero units were affordable since none sold for under $450,000. Of the new housing units, 96% were apartments and the remainder were townhouses. More than 50% of those units sold for more than $750,000. But missing the target for six years in a row didn't stop the big blue orc from trying to win the affordable housing game by moving the goalposts. Hidden within the details of Bill 23, the new official affordable housing metric used by the creatures of the province will become a price-based instead of income-based metric of affordability. Measuring affordability as houses priced 10% below market value, an affordable home in the Shire would be considered affordable if it sold for $750,000 or less. By increasing the affordability threshold almost 75%, the Big Blue Ore can claim that over 50% of houses in the Shire were affordable, automatically doubling the 25% target and making him and his property developer friends the big winners as they tear up the green belt. Meanwhile, in War 2, the property orcs at HB Developments are attempting to take over the abandoned lot at 14 Stevenson North. They are proposing a three-story building with 10 housing units and 13 parking spaces. By following the rule of the ward and having more parking spaces than units, HB Development's proposal appears reasonable at first in the eyes of Carly of Classen and the Elder Els. Requesting a rezone to medium-density residential from low-density, their proposal is reasonable but not affordable. The planning report did note the big red flag in the proposal as HB Developments is not committing to affordable housing that meets the city's defined affordable housing benchmark as part of the proposed redevelopment. A public meeting with the Council of Elders is required before approval but is yet to be scheduled. The next planned meeting is currently scheduled for June 13th. Back at the university's ivory tower, the fat cats pushed the limits of guaranteeing residence spots for their students. But not for all students, as international students are still guaranteed a spot over domestic students who may face a lottery system for their beds. Over the past decade, the university has steadily increased the number of students, especially international students, resulting in hundreds of excess applications for residence. Last year, they already pushed the residence buildings to capacity, overloading them with an extra 400 beds to reach 5,100 spots for the 5,150 applicants that year. Similar to the double cohort year in 2003, 
they increased the number of spots in residence to 5,100 by converting double rooms to triples and turning some lounges, common rooms, into bedrooms. Those who were there at the time recall students living in open lounge areas with shower curtains or office wall dividers as their privacy rooms. This year's residence application numbers are still unknown, but the university is considering housing 40 students at the Days Inn like they did last year. If the homeless student hotel at Stone Road gets approved, then those who can afford the $1,500 rent per month can live there instead of in residence. As mentioned earlier in the CMHC report, the $1,500 rent is considered unaffordable according to the income-based approach. So we will see what happens this fall as students hunt for unaffordable housing again. Will the Shire's housing cost crisis get any better? Stay tuned here to see.